Hey everyone, it's me Katie from Bobby Hair Studio and I'm here today to show you how to take a hard rooted blonde and make it into something that's a lot more softer and more lived in. Starting with the back, I like to work um, similarly on either side. So I like to pull out the same section from either side. And I'm gonna start with the nape of the neck and I have weaved out a baby light that's going to be a highlight and then whatever's left here is going to be a low light. These little baby neck hairs are very fragile and prone to breaking and my client really wants to have her hair grow longer. So we are going to low light these so that they don't have to go through highlighting again and they don't end up being super fragile. Then we take whatever we weaved out and pinned away and we're going to highlight that. Now you'll see that I'm using different foils for my highlights and my lowlights and that's a really good visual representation about what is going on and it lets me see where I've placed my highlights and my lowlights in the future. And that way if I get brain fog I don't forget what I've just done. Um, if, you do, if you've done a lot of foiling then you'll get some brain fog sometimes you'll be like wait what was my last one? Was it a highlight or a lowlight? This saves you a lot of time by doing that and it does give you a visual representation of how your hair is going to look when it's processing. So I like to do the back as one big section and I like to work with the two sides being uh, like more angled and triangular and then I like to connect them with the piece in the middle that ends up being like a big thick triangle. You'll see what I'm saying in a moment here. And the reason why I like to do diagonal sections on the corners here is because it ends up being more blended than to do a straight up horizontal section. And the horizontal section that I have in the middle um, is going to be a lot thicker and a lot bigger. And I am starting with a really big low light here because I want to connect those two low lights that are on each edge of the nape of the neck there. And then I'm going to be taking a pretty large section here and I'm going to separate it into pretty much two. And I'm going to leave out some stuff so that the blonde ends that we currently have are still there. Those pieces right there are going to be left out entirely. And then I'm going to baby light, strand light this section that I have into two right now. And what I'm going to do is I am going to put my low light foil or my highlight foil in there, as sorry, and then I'm going to very gently brush up with my Big Daddy brush. And I like these brushes because they have very soft bristles and they're really, really great for blending. So back combing and using a blending brush is your best way to get a really soft blend. And then what I wanna do as well is I wanna make sure that I'm not making her too dark. So we need to have that soft balance between highlighting the root area and low lighting some areas that go all the way down to the ends to give her something that's still really blonde, but a lot easier to maintain and a lot lower maintenance. So this is going to be a low light here on the side and I'm going to do a low light on the other side as well. Everything I do on one side, I reflect on the other because I want this to be very symmetrical. And when you're placing low lights in a very strategic way, you wanna make sure that everything is very symmetrical. So that's why I don't work as one side versus the other. I work with the back all being one big piece and I do everything as a mirror reflection. And then I'm going to be putting in this highlight right above it. So how this whole thing ends up looking is that there's a piece left out that has the blonde tipped out ends and then there is a little tiny low light in between that tip out end piece and the highlight that attaches the roots. So I know that that might be very hard to visualize here, but when you guys see me put in enough foils, you'll totally understand that there are essentially three looks here. One look is the low light, one look is the highlight right up to the root, and it's a baby light, so it's very fine and soft, and it will grow out really nicely. And then the other look is the tipped out super blonde ends. And this prevents her from looking like she just has a straight up highlight low light. This gives her that really soft balayage effect. You'll probably also notice that every time I'm putting in a low light that I'm actually going all the way down to the ends of the hair. And this has just come from experience over time is that low lights are extremely hard to blend if you're trying to blend them just down halfway the length of the hair. You're going to see an abrupt little finish of where you've put the color. It's almost impossible to completely blend downwards and make a really soft feathered edge. So that's why I'm doing baby light low lights and I am going all the way to the tips of the hair and I'm covering them completely. I'm also giving it a lot of good saturation because when you're doing low lights, you have to ensure that your saturation is peak, that it's your best saturation because low lights are 
pretty finicky when you work with them. So the best way to blend your low lights, if you're pr pretty new to it, is to work with baby low lights because if there is a tiny little strand that isn't fully saturated or fully blended, it's not really going to be noticeable at all. And what I like to do is I like to make sure that there is a lot more of the blonde on the sides of the head going towards the ear rather than being in that middle connecting piece because that middle connecting piece is going to be where I keep a little bit more of the depth and the darkness so that you get that natural raindrop effect which which when you look at the top of the head it's going to be blonder towards the front and a little less blonde towards the crown and the back of the head and that's what gives a really natural soft grow out. So we also want to connect the blondness from behind the ears to in front of the ears. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that as well. But th that's why I do a little bit more blonding in these side pieces when I create little triangles on the side towards the ears. And I drop out a little bit more of what's in the triangle piece like right there because that's going to have a lot of blonde in the ends which is still going to give her that blonde impact but I'm not putting a ton of the blonde in the middle there. Just enough to connect those two sides. So let's talk about what's in the bowl. For my lightener bowl, I'm just using Blonde Me and 7 Volume because I want something to lift her nice and slow. And she doesn't really need more than 7 Volume because you can see she's a natural like level 8. And so her hair lifts pretty easily and it lifts to a platinum blonde. I don't need to use more than a level 7. And in her low light formula, I mix together Schwarzkopf Vibrants 8-0, 8-11, and 9-42 with a 6 volume. Now this formulation is very important because I just said her natural level is about a level 8, so I want to mix a little bit lighter than her natural level. Because when you put a low light formula on previously bleached hair, sometimes the porosity of that bleached hair overdoes it with the low light and it will look a lot darker. So I want to always formulate my low light to be lighter than my natural color just in case that porosity makes things a lot darker than they really are formulated to be at. So the 8-O is a natural which, which is going to provide us some fill. It's a slightly warmer color. The 8-11 is going to balance out that warm color and the 9-42 is just a level lighter to ensure it doesn't go super dark but it also has some balance to make sure that we don't have an orange low light. Now we're going to be doing the front and as you can see from my two previous foils here right in the front we are maintaining a money piece but there's still little bits left out, little baby lights left out and you can see that it's a maintained money piece by the fact that I have two strawberry foils instead of a silver foil in between them. So that's just two soft little baby lights to ensure that she still has a very natural soft money piece involved there and we don't accidentally put any low lights right around her face. Now I'm going to be working on a diagonal upwards and you can really see how I'm working on my blending here with this blending brush. Again, I wouldn't use a hard, a hard straight edge brush with any service like this where you're trying to provide a really soft blend because it's just going to give you really hard looking edges. And I'm working on an angle here because it at one point pulls all the color forwards as you can tell. Everything kind of falls forward and gives it a little bit more of a natural look as well as the fact that these foils kind of connect to the back here where it creates a soft little V just behind the ear and everything flows really naturally and we don't have any weird dark spots behind the ear, which can sometimes happen if you're not paying attention to your foiling. But I'm going really, really close up to the root here so she has a long, long last with her color work and that way she can just have a lot more of the blonde right up in the front Versus in the back, I did a little bit more back combing, which pushes the lightener a little further away from the scalp, which again is going to give her a little bit more of a natural grow out. As per my foiling pattern, it's pretty much the same as what I did in the back here. I leave a little section out, and then from the top half of that section, I have baby weaved two areas. The top area is going to be my highlight. The bottom area is going to be my low light. And just a quick little side note, so sorry about not having all of my typical little things that you'd see in my videos today, like my intro and my outro. We had some computer problems, so I'm doing this all on my husband's computer. So please bear with me. This is not my normal video style, but you know, if you like it, let me know because <laughs> I don't have to add in intros and outros. I just thought I would because that's what you're supposed to do on YouTube. 
And with this last piece, I am working in a horizontal section and that's going to kind of connect my sides and my back to the mohawk up here. And I've left out a pretty decent sized chunk in a triangle section out behind that. And that's just going to have that tipped out blonde look to it. It's going to be really cute, really soft, and just going to provide a lot of connection from the sides to the back to the top. Also with all of my highlights, I'm being sure not to overlap any of that blonde because we don't want to cause any breakage. So all those little blonde ends, I just kick out the side of the foil before I wrap it up. Just like that. So I'm only going to show a portion of the top. You don't need to see the whole thing. It's the same thing as I've been doing in the front and the back, but it's pretty fast because everything is in a square shaped section and it just goes really, really fast. So I'm continuing that pattern all the way from the back to the front. I am starting with a low light so that I get that soft drop at the back of her head in case her parting goes really far back and opens up. We're not going to have like highlight chunks that you see start right up there at the very top and also what I'm going to be doing is doing this same pattern all the way up to the front where there's about an inch left of her hair and that inch is going to be just highlights I'm still going to leave my weaves out but I'm not going to be adding in a low light because I want to maintain a very very soft subtle money piece so again no low lights around the face so while you watch the rest of this foiling, I'm going to go over my root shadow and my highlight toners because I didn't film them in the sink, but I have those formulas for you here. So my root shadow formula, I know, like I said earlier, don't have your low light be darker than the natural, but a root shadow is going to be going on wet hair. So the wet hair is going to be diluting the formula quite a bit. As well as the fact is I just put it on there for a couple of minutes. Once it's looking how I want it to look, it's just shadowed it just a little bit. That's when I rinse it off. I'm not leaving it on dry hair for full processing time plus some like I am with my low light. So my root shadow formula is Schwarzkopf Vibrance and I'm using a 7-55, a 7-1, an 8-0 and a 6 volume gel. So the 7-55 is a gold gold. And what I really like about the Schwarzkopf line is that their gold is more of a champagne gold. It's not super yellowy. And that doesn't help when you're trying to get a super warm color, but it's really good when you're trying to get a very soft blended color. So the 7-55, there's not very much in there, just enough to provide some balance, fill, and some shine to this low light. The 7-1 is an ash color and that's used to create some depth and shadow and to prevent any warmth from really coming through and to keep it neutral. The 8-0 is to lighten up those level 7 colors because there's not an 8-55 and it provides a bit of a natural fill as well because you really need fill when you're trying to do a root shadow because you don't want it to look super hollow. Once I put that on, that's going to be sitting on her hair for about three or four minutes while I'm mixing up my highlight toner. And you guys would not guess what I'm putting in my highlight toner today. My highlight toner is a mix of whatever was left in the bowl from the root shadow and I've put in a whole bottle of a 9-57 which is, you guessed it, copper gold or gold copper. <laughs> and most people will be like, why would you put in orange and yellow into that highlight? So what I really like about the 9, like the level 9 gold copper is that it just adds so much shine and health to the hair color. This hair is going to look super, super soft. It's also going to provide some balance between her new highlights and her old highlights. Have you ever done some highlights in the roots and then realized that your new highlights are a lot brighter than your previous highlights? And those previous highlights are kind of ashy from over the top purple shampoo use, or maybe they've just over absorbed some toner in the past. For whatever the reason, if you're just doing your formulas with ash tones, that's probably why you're seeing a significant difference from your roots to your ends. So try adding in something with some warmth. Maybe don't try a copper for your first time if you've never tried copper for your highlights before. Maybe try something with a little bit of gold or some beige. And those provide a lot of balance from roots to ends. And they will blend your highlights that are new to your highlights that are old a lot better. I promise you that. So that 9-57 is there for a lot of warmth balance and shine in the hair and it's also there to really brighten up whatever was left in the root shadow because whatever's in the root shadow I'd like to kind of 
bring down towards the ends of a much lighter, softer version of it. So this way I'm getting an impeccable blend because I'm still using the same tones in the roots as I am down towards the ends, but they're just super, super diluted and they're warmed up a little bit by that level 957 so that we have a little bit of that 7-1 in there that's going to fight any super over the top copper tones that I may have put in or any yellow tones and the 8-0 is going to provide again fill and balance and this whole thing is, is going to come together in a very very soft way and I'm going to show you the results right now. So just a reminder here is her before super grown out harsh roots into over the top blonding through the ends. And here is her final result. It's an extremely blended color. It's very soft. It has that warmth around her face. She has really beautiful blue eyes and she gets very tanned in the summer. So these are colors that complement her skin and her eyes. And it makes everything so much easy for, easier for her to grow out because you, as you can see from that root, it's extremely blended. It's very soft and she can grow her roots for six months before wanting to get more highlights. And what our future plan is for these highlights is just to do highlights every six-ish months and do less and less and less of them while still maintaining a very soft money piece so that she can have something that's a little bit more rooty up through the top and get some of that darkness that she's wanting back but in a really soft gentle way. And now she doesn't have to go through any more awkward stages. So this is her final color. It's very shiny from those, you know, five and seven additives in there. And it is still very balanced from the cool tones that are in those formulas. What do you guys think of this pattern and these formulas today? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know. And if you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel go a long way. And we love to provide a lot of free education for hairstylists and hair enthusiasts. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.